Insurance is dedicated to helping the businesses and people of Baton Rouge secure their affordable insurance tailings. With our curated network of insurance carriers, we provide the best solutions for home, auto, life, and business coverage. Ether Insurance, powering and protecting your world. 2020 took a toll on all of us. If you're going through a divorce or custody issue, let Dejan Law Office be by your side in 2021. Dejan Law Office, fighting for what you deserve. 344-ANDY. Brandon Lejean here, courtesy Buick GMC. Call Brandon Lejean at 337-224-1867. Come see us today, courtesy Buick GMC. We showed you what the GOAT was last year when we beat y'all 50 to seven. Relax, you big boy. One team, one team, one team, one one team, 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 What's up, guys? Matt and Jack here. One Team, One Podcast. How's it going, man? Good. Episode 59. Rasco. Dang. Had it ready. I don't even know. Yeah. Who, who else is number 59 in the chat? Let how, do you, me know. how do you say his first name? Jamario? Jamario Rasco. Mario? Jamario? He was from yeah. uh, Evangel. I remember that. Oh, is that right? Yep. I actually didn't know that. Sure was. Um. All right. Uh, interesting little week here. We have uh, LSU basketball. Uh, that's going to be coming up at six o'clock. Yeah, so forty it, minutes. Yeah, and what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to have uh, WAFB's Jacques Doucet come on. Uh, we'll talk to him about basketball and then also baseball that just happened this weekend, and we'll get his thoughts. And I have a lot to say about baseball. <laughs> I think yeah. you know we've been yeah. we've been texting um, a lot of things to say about baseball. Um, but with basketball hot and heavy right now, and you know we just had the Joe Lenardi um bracketology came out yeah uh seven seed. seven seed so that's the first time we've been up to a so, seven right in line with the otop OTOP is right there yeah. <laughs> uh i pretty sure joe lenardi saw only, only difference is that joe lenardi and i uh, are on wildly different pay grades like yeah not even close for sure although we're saying the same thing 
So. Yes. Um, so we are going to uh, bring on Jock in probably about five minutes or so. But uh, we really a uh, big shout out to our sponsors. Uh, you saw the uh, commercial we just played. Ether Insurance, Courtesy Buick GMC, uh, and Bear Process Safety, and Dejan Law Office. Um, good guys. Andy is a, a great guy. So if anybody's in uh, any kind of legal needs, uh, Andy Dejan can take care of you. Uh, also, we have a, a brand new sponsor um that we just announced today and this is going to be a really good partnership i think but bogeys i think everybody has a bogey story in baton rouge most people do um me and my wife we were just talking about like what's your biggest one do it my biggest bogey story (laughs) um i walked in and my all right so in high school i played guard and my right tackle was at the bar and i go up to him and i say hey man hadn't seen you in a long time (laughs) this is in high school and he literally just falls over, <laughs> like unconscious, falls on the ground at bogeys. <laughs> we, I then had to like help pick him up and bring him out. Like, oh god, yeah. So uh, there's been a lot of those. I nights. think my best bogey story actually isn't even at bogeys, and it's before I was. I was also in high school. Uh, me and uh, you know William, we were heading home from, uh, and hopefully William's watching this because he knows the story too. Uh, we were heading home from an LSU football game. I can't remember who we were playing, but we were heading back to my house on uh, in uh, Plantation Trace. Mm-hmm. And uh, as we're going, we're we're passing up LSU Ave. Uh, we're almost to my house, and this guy comes sprinting out of uh, that gas station right there. And he goes, "Hey!" He comes knocking on the door, banging on the door. He goes, "Hey, get get let me in the fucking car. I want to go to Bogies." And I was like. One of the worst decisions I've ever made. I let him in the car. And you drove uh, the bogeys? No. <laughs> we, he was in their car. We were sitting in ContraFlow. It was, I mean, it, like we were barely moving. Uh, and he's like, fuck this. I'm running. So he gets out and he starts going towards Lee. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't think that's the correct way. I didn't. I really didn't even know where bogeys was at the time because I had never been even to Tigerland at that point. But it was, uh, that was, that was one of those. Yeah. So in the chat, I would like people to give us your best bogey stories, uh, from college. So yeah. let's get that going. We need to trend. I know that. Billy's got a really good one. We need to get him on the show. Oh, tell shit. It. Yeah, we do. Yeah. But we will be partnering with bogeys to where we can do live streams from bogeys. Um, they have a lot of athletes obviously coming in and out of there too. So we're going to be able to get the hookup with that way. Uh, should be a really good, a really fun partnership. We've already talked about, uh, for March Madness, uh, the Masters, um, and we've even discussed a uh, Kentucky Derby party. There could be a lot oh, of things cool. in the works at Bogies on the patio. So, nice. and I actually walked in there. You know, I've been to the I've been to the Fred's patio a million times, and I'm sure I've been to the Bogies patio. But I walked out there today, and I was like, "When did y'all do a patio?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, man, this has been here forever." And yeah. I was like, "Man, how oh. drunk was I at <laughs> Bogies?" Um, that's basically how it is. Um, all right, so again, we're going to have Jock Doucet in just a few minutes. Yeah. Um, Sam Bacon's in the chat already. Sam, brush up on the go- golf skills. So we were just talking about yeah. that, and we have our mics already. Sam, we're going to be live at the ba- Basil uh, Golf Tournament. We are going to be interviewing people. We're going to be oh, yeah. the man on the street uh, in the golf tournament. So, <laughs> um, so all right, Jock just said, uh, no, we're going to do 530. He just, he just uh, big-timed me five more minutes. So. Sheesh. Yeah, she's this guy. Uh, should have got a <laughs> off to, should have got a, uh, WVLA instead, huh? <laughs> off to a rough start. All off right, so he said start. one team, one podcast live from uh, Casada Pines. Casada uh, Pines. Okay, I actually needed to know the name of the. Yes, yeah, so we'll uh, oh, okay drinks after the tournament. We course. we will live stream some of that as well. So uh, y'all y'all make sure guys if you're on the YouTube for sure um, or if you're on Facebook or any other. Uh, platform go to our youtube page please and go like and subscribe we're going to be doing a lot of content from the youtube page uh so go there if you can um we would really appreciate that um might have some partnerships coming in the works here soon so um and also we're talking to a couple other sponsors that are going to get involved as well so uh look we haven't even done this for a year yet do you know that yep yeah so i don't i think it was march 18th i think uh yeah that was the first time we recorded i think we're right around a year in terms of the idea of the podcast yeah so I need to well go back through my texts and since, find since we're on the subject is our other podcast that we first started with oh. that's been a year 
Right. And I think after and right that, around, right around when y'all started, as I was like, well, me. I just bought all this equipment. I want to do an LSU one. <laughs> right. So it hadn't even been a year yet. I feel like um, I was just telling somebody this the other day. This has been a one year of uh, us learning how to do this <laughs> yeah. and getting it under our belt. But now I feel like we are at a level to where we can kind of take it to the next thing. And the next thing is going to be YouTube. So yeah. uh, we first started doing audio podcasts and now we're doing video. Um, we didn't feel comfortable doing video. I still don't necessarily. I've, I would love to go back and edit a lot of things that we do, but um, it is what it is. So, um, but again, we're going to have Jacques in just a few minutes. After Jacques, though, stick around. We are going to live stream during the LSU basketball game. Um, we'll at least get through the first half or yeah. so. Uh, you guys stick around in the chat as well and share this around if you can. Uh, we want to try to start doing that a little bit more, uh, be interactive with you guys during the game. We're pretty interactive on Twitter, but um, I think this way we can kind of talk to you guys, and I'll, I'll tell you my – I get very emotional during games. So, um, And look at this. He he said uh, no five thirty. Uh, we're gonna hear him in now. Um, Jacques, there he you, is. Are you dressed, Jacques? Yeah, <laughs> yes, I am. I'm not seeing myself on your. Let's see here. Mm. Oh, Jacques's gone dead. <laughs> see here. Unable to share. So hang on. Oh, click on your. Uh, Click on your camera and click it again, the little camera button the thing. Okay. It says Okay. Settings. Video input. Uh, there you go. go. Look at this. Wonderful. There we go. Let's see here. Can you hear me? I can, yes, hear I can hear you and see me. Hear, hear an echo to you though. Do you have headphones, maybe? Uh, I don't hear myself now. I think we're good. Okay, we're good. Yeah, I thought I heard ourselves. Oh, you're ago, good, but no, we're good now. Um, okay. Yeah. So, all right, Jacques. First time you've been on one team one podcast. We've had you on since we're on the subject multiple times, obviously. So. Um, <laughs> If you remember I'm now gonna, i'm gonna we, need like uh, a whiteboard and i'm gonna have to write down like all the local podcasts and oh, the yeah. the so i can keep up with you know all of them and, and the rivalries and everything yes and we so i'm with since we're on the subject it was me blake and tim and blake just commented in the chat he said can we listen to van halen music right now he wants us to play <laughs> in the background we're not gonna do that blake come on calm down we're on YouTube. Uh, this is the lsu podcast guys we get booted um, right off on YouTube. Oh, that's right. YouTube will boot <laughs> us off. So, Jacques, tell us about the podcast game now. Yeah, you're in it now, right? So, like, uh, you're you're in the podcast game strong starting tomorrow, correct? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I've done a lot of these long interviews during the pandemic already. They just weren't called podcasts or I don't know what they were called, really. I, I would edit them and B-roll them, and then we put them up on WAFB.com. Uh, but uh, that wasn't technically a podcast. So uh, I'm going to do one once a week where I try to sit down with somebody uh, well-known in the sports uh universe and i'd like to also venture out to music i'm a big fan of music so i've like sent emails to some you know well-known musicians and stuff so like maybe one out of every three or one out of every four i might do something like that so yeah the debut tomorrow i had a blast uh i thought of like who could i talk to to tell great stories funny stories and john brady and i former lsu head coach we sat down and just had a blast and so i did some research and you know, and just everything I could remember from, you know, and not just, so coach, what was it like to coach at LSU? No, no, no. We, we're right. going to get into like fiery press conferences when he lost his cool and ah, damn Jacques, you asked the stupidest questions, you know, all the, <laughs> all the back in the day stuff. Um, and I put the teaser out today, just one quick sample in, in 2003, uh, Matt, I don't know if you remember. So LSU basketball was playing in the SEC tournament in, uh, New Orleans in the Superdome back when they played in the Superdome and they beat the snot out of Arkansas opening game. That's when Stan Heath was the head coach of Arkansas. Okay. Got a couple of like Montel Williams. Uh, yeah, he did. This is how we do it. That's right. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the, 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 the daytime oh, host. Not, that's right. Mont 
not different guy. Right, I got you. But Montreal, that's Montreal Jordan, wasn't it? This is how Montreal we do Jordan. it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> 1996. Yeah. So uh, anyway, so LSU beat the brakes off Arkansas, and there was a there was a skirmish late in the game, a lot of back and forth, and one of the Arkansas players actually mouthed off to Brady, like told him something, and Brady turned around and told him something, and the ref called a tech, and he threw the Arkansas player out of the game. So <laughs> after the so after the game, the one of the Arkansas reporters was trying to noodle Brady, just as I would have done if I was like covering you. Know. So he says, uh, Coach, what what did you tell Ferguson? And Brady said. I was responding to what he said to me, sir. And the guy said, well, what did you say to him? None of your business. And so that was kind of the end of that, that little quick discussion. And then another reporter asked him, well, coach, what's your plan for Florida? Well, I'm not going to get into that because I think Billy Donovan can read. Okay. And so <laughs> yeah, those, those kind of stories with Brady. And then we go into the final four and stuff. So, so the debut one will be tomorrow with, uh, with John Brady. I'll have to get John Brady on maybe Thursday, and we'll see if he has any Jacques stories for us. We'll have to uh, <laughs> vice versa. <laughs> the, the first time I met John Brady real quick, um, Josh Maravich had just walked on to the LSU basketball team. Okay. It, was, it was 2002, like in the fall. So it was like, Jacques, go down the street and get a soundbite with, with Coach Brady about Josh Maravich walking on. So – so I go down there and like I told him, way too confident back then for my very lack of ability to do this job when I first started. Came <laughs> in, as, as most people are when they first get started, they think they're hot, you know what, and they don't know anything but as I was. And so I go over there and I'm like, hey, Coach Brady, I'm Jacques Doucet from Channel 9. And uh, he oh, kind of well, you sound like Paul Maneri right now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, watch your mouth, Matt. We won last night. We scored 16 runs. Okay. I didn't, I didn't go do an impression of Paul today, but I did. Okay, go ahead. So, so I said, Coach, I'm, you know, I'm Jacques Doucet. And he looked at me and he goes, I've seen you before. <laughs> so, yeah, I've seen you before. You know, so. Uh, and off we went. But, no, uh, you know, Coach Brady, I think, he really, towards the end of his three or four years at LA, he changed a lot. And I remember Daryl Mitchell after LSU beat Duke at a press conference. He said, uh, "Well, when I first got to LSU, Coach Brady was one tough cookie," and uh, and said he had really lightened up, and, and and all of us really like Coach Brady now. And then Coach Brady goes, "Man, somebody passed me a hanky. I'm about to cry up here. You know, I'm getting, you know, I'm getting very high. I'm getting emotional." So there's all sorts of stuff that we uh, that we that we talk about. But uh, uh, Matt, you talk about my first year on the job. The, the three big coaches were Nick Saban, John Brady, and Skip Berkman. You talk right. about a combination of terrifying, intimidating. You know, Skip was always nice, but it was like, this is a guy I've watched on TV since I'm a kid. And now I'm right. holding a microphone talking to this guy. That was like, you know, uh, you know, what do I ask? And then, you know, Nick Saban enough said, and then John Brady you know, said, you know, I was like, I thought this was going to be fun, man. I, I've come to Baton Rouge and cover LSU. I was excited. But uh, so anyway. Um, all right, so let's move on to current days. Um, and we're we're gonna be we're gonna be big partners of this Jacques talk. I wanna I wanna pub that as much as we can. Uh, we'll keep retweeting anything that you put out, Jacques. I, I love all your content. Sure. I'm wearing I'm wearing uh, the Cecil the Diesel shirt right now, if you can see. Uh, so oh, it's by the way, how did that how did that go with him? I need to listen. We didn't we didn't get him on, so uh, he was okay. he was uh, big time in us. He was like, I got to talk to Jacques first. I can't talk to you guys <laughs> yet, and uh, so we we pushed it back. But we were trying to get him on for Auburn week, but we couldn't get him on. But I do have some Cecil the Cecil the Diesel Cecil Collins sign yeah. gear all over the place in here. So uh, we've gotten that going. But let's talk a little bit about oh, we have the basketball game coming up at six o'clock. Uh, I know that was a add-on game, uh, quad two, so it's not terrible. It's a quad two game on the road. Um, but let's talk about the basketball team and the momentum that they have right now. Um, what do you see right now? Because I, the Joe Lenardi just came out as a seven seed in the tournament. Um, I know you have Georgia. You got Ar Arkansas with Vandy left, right? right? So two out of three. Maybe one best, more in there. You know, worst case scenario, two out of three is kind of what I'm thinking, hopefully. But uh, what are you trying to see out of the basketball team for the to the end of the year here? To maybe get off that eight and nine seed level? Yeah, I, I, Will Wade has said they're going to try to schedule another game after the Vanderbilt game. 
um, they're, they're going to do their best to schedule another one. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but they've got a makeup date after. So you got three games left at, at the current point. Georgia, this is a case. I hate to say it, but there's everything to lose and not much to gain. You know, you just got to win tonight. You can't lose a game like this. And the first time LSU played Georgia, it was too close for comfort. Uh, yeah. Arkansas, Arkansas is the big opportunity to go to Arkansas. They're 20, uh, 25 or are they? Yeah, they're hot. They're hot. So, so you beat those guys on the road. That's, that's another feather in your, in your cap for sure. And then you play Vanderbilt, who's, who's pretty bad to close out. Um, and then you go to the SEC tournament and, um, and I've always enjoyed the SEC tournament. Um, it kind of gives you that first really burst of adrenaline into into tournament play, you know, when you play it. Right. Yep. And, um, and and so you may get an opportunity to, to beat a nice, a highly ranked team there uh, as well. At this point, I guess LSU is going to be in the top four, so they get the double bye. Mm-hmm. I just go on a drive there again and have nothing to do like I did last year. I went all the way up there, and then there was no tournament at all. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that, all right, so um, you guys are obviously going to go there and you're going to cover it. I, I don't know what the fan attendance is going to be. Do we even know that yet for the SEC tournament? Is it going to be any? I mean, any at all? I, I, I think I have heard they're going to let fans in. The uh, They used to call it the Gaylord Arena. I think they call it the Bridgestone Arena now. I think it's 18,000, 17,000, something like that. So – yeah, big they, arena. That's where they, yeah, the, yeah. the uh, Nashville Predators play and all that. That's okay. like a big deal down there. Um, so it could be like, what, like 5,000 or so? Maybe. I don't know. Full of Kentucky fans. So it'll be just 5,000 <laughs> Kentucky fans, right? Yeah, I, I wouldn't say five. I, I, I don't know. It might be two or three or something like that. Uh, I do know Kent Lowe has talked to us about it and, and told me that you're not going to have a whole lot to do up there. I mean, I'm probably going to be like at the top of the arena. You know, there's no interviews afterwards except on the Zoom. Uh, I can't shoot the game myself. There's not a whole, you know, I'm going to have to get creative <laughs> covering the team up there. But uh, Well, you have been getting creative, though. We talked about just a second ago with the, with the Jacques talk and, like, interviewing players. You've been one of the ones that has really stood out, I think, in the media of doing things a little differently than 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 – people have been in the past right so you're starting to adapt to that a little bit right yeah you think about people you can talk to you know i can maybe talk to parents of a player uh will wade's from nashville there's that angle to it i mean there's always something you can come up with uh, i might interview dr kent low you know ah, thanks for having me Jack. you know i might talk to might talk to the doctor so there's a lot of different things uh that, that i can probably come up with i know i know channel nine is not going to pay money just for me to go up there stay in a hotel and eat and watch basketball so that's the uh that, that, that's the other state by the way I, I apologize who's the name of your co-host matt and it's jack jack Poss. Jack so Poss. jack is jack, my nephew yeah. so i'm 42 and jack is 22 right. and we grew up obviously i was teaching him lsu but we've grown up in different eras so right. I think it's always fun to uh, to talk to you, and you'll tell you'll tell stories about the '90s, and and he's like, yeah, I I wasn't even yeah. born yet, so uh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I think uh, Chuck, we actually met uh, in Atlanta last year. You were sitting at a table with uh, me, my girlfriend's dad, and uh, Charlie Hanegriff in okay. the uh, hotel lobby. You I, you were only there very briefly, so that was for the uh, Oklahoma game. For the Oklahoma game, that's right. Yeah. You you look like Matt Houston to me. Doesn't he look like Matt Houston? Our reporter sure does. Yeah, I saw a lot of Matt Houston uh, uh, this past week uh, with the freeze. (laughs) He was on my TV. He was on my TV all all day. I hope that's a compliment. Yeah, he's not bad. Yeah, he's all right. Good looking guy. Yeah, I think I think you need to lose a few pounds, but uh, oh, I'm working on that. You're there. Well, he already says he's got a girlfriend, right? So what? Yeah, who cares? Yeah, it's done. All right, so. and a beautiful day outside today, by the way. Wasn't today great? Oh, I mean, dude, perfect. all right. The last couple of days, you know what it's reminded me of? And it's actually a scary reminder. It reminded me of when COVID hit uh, last year. And the saving grace for COVID, especially, you know, I'm in sales. So it's like I'm, I want to go talk to people all day long. But I was stationed in my house for a month at least. Well, the weather was perfect that entire time. That, so that was the best thing was that I could actually be outside and actually get a tan and yeah. like, you know, perfect weather. It was like, thank God it's perfect weather. Right. It'd be, yeah. it would be really bad if we had COVID and it was ice storm at the same time. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, 
Definitely. I mean, uh, to think a week ago, uh, uh, 16 degrees, I think we had 64 straight hours of freezing. It was a record or some kind of record. And uh, uh, I went out to LSU softball. They were playing North Dakota last week, 32 degrees. Everyone's bundled up and just no. uh, misery. <laughs> but uh, any, anybody who says the uh, that the summertime in Louisiana is just as bad as the winter in the Midwest or whatever, you are smoking crack. There is no way. Right. I mean, look, you're going to sweat. You're going to get a little tired. Big deal. I mean, those people, yeah. they got the ice. They got the. The wrecks, the it's just misery. It robs you of your spirit. You can't go outside. No right. way. We shut down the freaking city last week. So yeah, no, I think that was proven incorrect. Yeah, now I need to give. It's it's weird. We shut down the city and we're frozen, and now we want to go to like Beaver Creek and go hit, you know, hit some balls. It's uh, Louisiana. This is what yeah. we get. All right, yeah, so uh, Javante Smart to me is playing like at a different level this like right now in the, in the season. Wouldn't you say that is the case? Like him and then with Darius Days on on yep. in the roster coming back in. Yep. Um it it seems like there's lightning in a bottle right now for LSU basketball. Um and it just feels like they're about to take it to the next level and I don't know if I'm being too optimistic or not, but is that kind of what you're seeing from the from the outside reporting on them? Yeah, uh Matt, I mean Javante, you talked about the pandemic. I mean, oftentimes I'd I'd go on the levee, go for a jog or something, and I'd see Javante like last spring, last summer, running the levee, uh, you know, working, working hard. And um, I'm often amazed by, you know, how slender the guy is, but how strong he is. The fact yeah. that sometimes he's shooting the basketball. I feel like that his his heel is on like the midcourt logo sometimes, and just you know, firing that basketball, stroking it in. And uh, he, got honored, he got honored before the game. He's already in the 1,000-point uh, club. And I, I like he and Darius Days were a big part of that Sweet 16 team two years ago. And I've always liked the fact that they've got those two veterans kind of as the anchor of this team. And Darius Days in the beginning um, was – it seemed like he was – a three-point shooter was his specialty, like the Sweet 16 – yeah. team and now he does a lot of dirty work he gets in the inside a lot of rebounds a lot of putbacks right uh josh leblanc what a game he had against auburn he perfect six for six from the field i think he had yeah. 10 rebounds uh, 12 rebounds maybe a lot of a lot of points and a lot of production for not playing a whole lot and block shots and, and all that so uh, yeah. so yeah i think it's coming together obviously I, I don't did you catch will wade what he said after the game about how like i'm the boss and I have all the input. You don't have any input. And uh, right. it was yep. certainly a bit of the uh, carrying a big stick um, after that game that, that he'd kind yeah, of taken. I, it almost felt like he was uh, – I, I heard this I heard this analogy today, which was uh, maybe, maybe he was letting these guys um, do a little bit too much one-on-one -on -one to help their draft stock. Mm. Maybe he was doing a little bit of that – during the year and he wasn't being hard enough on them and like coaching them up enough. Um, and it kind of kicked in halfway into this year where he started saying, okay, we're going to stop that. We're going to get back to what we're really good at. Right. Um, and I think one of the examples was um, Trent Watford bringing the ball up uh, to kind of showcase some of his skills, um, things like that, mm -hmm. where it's like, yeah, that was great. But like, is it really necessary? I mean, can we have J Javante bringing the ball up? Yeah. <laughs> like, you right. know, it's trapped what happens you know right uh we were saying this uh last week you know if uh the worst the worst thing ever for uh Trin and watford is if he brought the ball up and josh leblanc was guarding him <laughs> <laughs> like that he would get he would get ripped every time yeah. uh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but i i love um i love the energy that that they're playing with right now and i think that was kind of what was missing in the beginning of the year was that defensive energy um, because you know they could score. I, we tweet we tweet with uh, John Brady uh, every game uh, because I love John Brady's quote. His original quote was, "They can fall out of bed and score eighty points." Um, well, whenever they score more than eighty, I I tweet him and I say, "Hey, yeah, they they fell out of bed and they scored one hundred and four, John." <laughs> so um, yeah. yeah, but yeah, they have the offense. It's just if they can get the defense level at the same, you know, close to the same. It's almost correlated to LSU football in 2019. Like you got the offense. If you just have some stops, mm -hmm. then you're going to blow this team out. Right. It's, it's similar. It's a similar capacity for basketball. 
Yeah, yeah. Complimentary, I think, is the, yeah, the, the word you go with. Uh, Saints Super Bowl when uh, they were not a tremendous defense in terms of some numbers, but they just turned people over, right? It's like 38 yeah, times, right? Yeah. Stealing possessions. Right. Yep. Uh, and so, um, yeah, I think you're right. I, I think that they have always shown the ability to score. And uh, and certainly I think what you said is true. I think sometimes, uh, whether it's football or basketball, uh, when these guys get here, they're on a countdown to try to get to the NBA or the NFL. You know, it, it's not, you know, you and me, Matt, we grew up, oh, I, I would die if I could run out of the Tiger Stadium and play football for LSU or – or play in the PMAC in front of 14,000 people or whatever. And a lot of these guys, it just doesn't hit him in the heart like uh, it, it would for, for some of us. Now, Javante, you know, he might be different. He grew up here, so it might be – but some of these guys, I mean, it's all about <laughs> when am I getting paid? You know, when can I uh, be a pro? And so uh, that's just kind of the way it is now. So uh, I'm seeing some of your chats here. Wesley wants to know the best game I ever covered. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll put it up on the big screen here for you. Yeah, and Wesley, there's been so many. It's been like the golden era of uh, of sports since I started. Like, like from my first year was 2011, uh, 2001, excuse me. And then in the first two, two, first 10 years, I saw two national championships in football, and the Saints won the Super Bowl. LSU went to the Final Four. Uh, women's basketball, the five straight Final Fours. LSU baseball won a national championship. Uh, we didn't have an NBA team, you know, and we got the Hornets that became the Pelicans. And so, oh, right. um, and, you know, in, in the sense of March Madness, Wesley, right now, I'll tell you that the LSU Duke game, when I was there that night, when LSU beat Duke yep. in the Georgia Dome, when there was uh, 30,000 people there and uh, all these Duke fans and uh, LSU was not supposed to win. And uh, and I'll never forget John Brady walking. We're in the bowels of the Georgia Dome, and I got one of those old school big fifty pound cameras, and I'm shooting LSU arriving at the arena, and I'm thinking John Brady's going to be full, full of P and V. This is the biggest game of his life, you know. And he looks at the camera, and goes, "Hey man, you got an exclusive tonight. This is a Channel Nine exclusive." And <laughs> fact, he was so loose, you know. I'm like. <laughs> and, and and I guess the team kind of took that on, and the breakaways by Tyrus Lee. Oh, man. They only scored 62 points that night. You know, it was not a high-scoring game. It was a Garrett Temple defense and all that. But, you know, well, we need to go back and, like, find the stats for John Brady era. What is the most points ever scored by a team under John Brady? I don't even know the answer to that. I don't think they've ever got to 100 or anything, huh? John, like, LSU scoring? Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, it's oriented. You what know? was the shot clock back then? Was it still thirty five? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it was still thirty five. You know, the most I can remember is like in the nineties, and that was uh, like they scored in the nineties, maybe against Arizona. Uh, no, I don't, I don't even they, know. Was that they, they scored eighty six against Arizona in two thousand right. at the PMAC? I, I mean, I'm, sixty. Uh, that was the Jabari behind the back dunk that you made famous on WAFB, correct? You had the highlight. I think there's a highlight reel that you made of Jabari going behind the back dunking. It's on YouTube. That's before I got there. It was right before I got there. I can't take credit for that, but our guy shot it. Somebody shot it at Channel Nine, but uh, but yeah, certainly that was yeah behind the back dunk. Um, I ran before that that day. I was in the student section, so I remember it vividly. And um, interestingly enough, John Brady says that that 2000 team was just as good as the the Final Four team. Um, you know, yeah. they, they they won 28 games. Uh, I mean, Wisconsin just bludgeoned them. Uh, yeah. Ref didn't want to call a foul that day, so there wasn't anything they could do that night. I before. hated Wisconsin after that. Like, you guys, you're boring basketball. You scoring 50 points and all that. This is, you know, so uh, I, I was annoyed with, that with Wisconsin after they won that game. But, uh, but yeah, and, and I told him, and you may agree with this, I think that was the best season of crowds at the PMAC during the John Brady era because it seemed like they – they were selling out like from the get go, and it was a madhouse all do you, year. Do you remember Chris Porter at Auburn? Yes. Oh my gosh! So there was two years in a row Chris Porter coming to to Baton Rouge. Um, that was just insane nights. Um, the ninety nine, uh, we had a huge lead on Auburn. Auburn was really good that year, um, and uh, we, I think it was like a almost like a twenty point lead in the second half. Uh, Auburn decides they're going to press. Uh, Chris Porter is the uh, the guy in front of the inbounders, uh, full court press, 
and he must have gotten, I'd say, five or six steals off of the inbounds and then immediate dunk. Um, they end up coming back and beating us in overtime. And then the next year, we were really good, 2000. We, we, we go pretty deep. Um, he comes in, and uh, the crowd we, – we were there. I was there. The crowd was on him from the very beginning. I and mean, we were – it was like – I think the game tipped off at 7. We were there at like 5.30, and we were just – everybody heckled Chris Porter the entire time. Chris Porter ate it up, though. It was like a huge hype. Like, it was so much energy in the PMAC, and I wish people understood, like, what that means. Like, energy in the PMAC is, like, yeah. it was a different level then. But um, he, I think he got teed up a few times, and that was back whenever, you know, everybody get when they get out, it's like left, right, left, right. And he, yeah. he didn't want to sit down and all that. Uh-huh. It was just so amazing, the time that we had back then uh, with the PMAC. Um, I, yeah. I was hoping you can get it back to that level. Right. I think Will Wade is the guy, but yeah. like, well, I mean, we we got close to that level several times. Yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah, actually, I mean, we got to that level against Tennessee that year. Uh, Tennessee, that was Tennessee, a, yeah. and then there was also there was the Arkansas game that year, which nobody remembers, but we lost by one, and that was a at at the time because that was before the Tennessee game. That was the loudest I'd ever heard the PMAC. We we went on this crazy comeback. I think we were down by like fifteen. We took the lead, and then Auburn ended up winning, but. That was, is that it, was a is, wild. Is, is there, are those atmospheres close to you than what you remember in the past? Yeah, uh, and I'll say this too. I think the biggest attended year was the Ben Simmons year. It was a disappointing year. The team didn't even go to the NIT. But I think as far as numbers go, uh, remember that Oklahoma game where yeah. it was, uh, yeah. they yeah. blew it? Uh, I went and, to uh, that year. That was a big one. Which yeah. was, was, was Kentucky with um, – uh, what's his name uh, for the Timberwolves – the turnaround jump shot to the end. Um, oh, we had another year before. That was Carl Anthony Towns? Yes, Towns. Yeah, that was the year before Ben Simmons. But, okay. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, they always had a first-rounder. But. Right, true. All right, the, be- uh, best LSU basketball game you've ever you've ever been to, ever remember? Oof. Uh, not at, at the PMAC. At the PMAC, I should say. Oh, um, going, going to a game, I mean uh, – I was at a game. I remember this well. Uh, LSU played uh, Vanderbilt. It was the 88-89 season. And LSU inbounded the ball to Chris Jackson in the corner. And he had about that much room to work with. And he somehow went up and hit a three-pointer at the buzzer to beat Vanderbilt at the buzzer. I remember that. Okay. I remember, all right, I remember it slightly different than you because I remember that. Hey, look, I got Chris Jackson's on right now. These are the uh, the the uh, Sports Illustrated cover Chris Jackson's. Um, he was the one inbounding the ball. That's right. He throws it to Ricky Blanton. Blanton throws it back to him in the corner, and I reenacted it in the uh, playground over and over and over. Uh, that's how I remember that. <laughs> that's um, exactly correct, yeah. Yeah. All right, what about you, Young Gun? What you, what, what's your favorite? Uh, well, it was the Tennessee game, yeah. Tennessee game uh, a couple of years ago yeah, with uh, when, Javante. And, and we find, yeah, and we find out 30 minutes before the game that Tremont's not going to play. That's right. And we were like, all right, well, I guess it was it was a fun season. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, and, and he then, took yeah, over. Javante comes in and scores 30. Perhaps one of the most memorable and, and the wildest atmospheres was two years ago when Will Wade had been suspended and LSU played yeah. Vanderbilt. I was just about to mention that, yeah. You're Joe. talking about Joe Oliva coming in the, yeah. in the down the steps. All right, Joe let's talk must about that. go. Joe must go. I mean, the whole student section. <laughs> Joe oh. must go. And the signs that night. Will Wade for AD. Yeah, Joe people getting kicked out. The the yeah, people uh, getting kicked out of the uh, PMAC because they had those signs that said something bad about Oliva. And and when Oliva walked in, I kid you not, it was like fourteen thousand snakes. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just. You know, Cobras is popping up and uh balls on that guy to go into the stadium that day. <laughs> the absolute brass balls on Joe Oliva. There's a, there's an older, lovely woman who goes to the gym that I see every day who I talk to about LSU sports. And she was sitting behind Oliva and when he sat down, she just made this face like, Oh my god, like she couldn't believe like the people are that angry and she's always in that shot. Like anytime we show that Joe Oliva shot. Because he sits down, he does like this. He goes, "I gotta look this up." Like uh, you know, uh, we'll get her. We'll, like get her we'll get her on the podcast. We'll get her on the podcast. All right. So my favorite PMAC uh, game ever was '93 um, 
Shaquille um, against Duke. Duke came in with Christian Leitner and the whole gang, uh, Grain Hill and all of them. And my dad got me those those tickets for my Christmas present. And then we go, and it was like in February. And uh, the atmosphere was just un. I I've never been anywhere at a, a LSU basketball game. I should I I've never been to another game like that um, with how much hype there was. And we were up most of that game until Christian Leitner kind of took over at the end. He just started. He just pulled it out and like hit a couple threes. And like Shaq was still in the paint. Like nothing you can do at that point, but man, that was just the glory days for me, man. That was the uh, the noise stick, right? They didn't have the noise stick. Yes. The Def Dome meter, right? Uh, the I'll tell you a quick story. I'll tell you a quick story about that game. Um, so the night before, there were students. You might have been in the well. You weren't an LSU I student. Was an, I was an upper deck. Yeah, I was upper deck. Okay. So students are camped out the night before the game, all down the the PMAC concourse. And so WAFB goes live and their, and their promotion that night was any, anybody that could spell Shashevsky right would get free pizza. <laughs> right. So they go down the road. Hey, can you spell Shashevsky? You know, and a lot of people got it wrong. And then, so finally I get this one kid. Yeah. Shashevsky K R Y Z E W F A. Whatever. You're right. That's it. That's it. You get the pizza, whatever. Okay. Mm-hmm. So get the pizza. So the game goes on. They play the game, whatever. Post game press conference. Mike Shashevsky's up there. He's wrapping up his press conference. He's walking away. The press conference ends. He's about to go to the bus. He walks. He turns to Steve Schneider. He goes, "Oh, by the way, that kid on your newscast last night. He didn't get my name right." <laughs> and so you never know who's watching. You know, it's just like, yeah, it's amazing. He's pulling in the audience, huh? Yeah, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, what's up with Coach K dogging on students, though? Yeah, right. I know. <laughs> All right, so got a couple of questions in here. Uh, do you think LSU uh, basketball is going to be able to make a far run in the tournament? So, and when I say far run, I, I he says Second far run. Weekend? I'm thinking like you win two games and get to the Sweet Sixteen, sure. right? I think a run in the tournament is 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 the Sweet Sixteen at least. Yeah, That's exactly. making it. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and, and if, if I think the bigger question is, okay, if you're an eight or a nine seed, you beat a one. I mean, that's gonna be that's gonna be really tough this year, I think. But if you get to a seven seed, you can beat a two, which you, I think you could if you play really well. And I heard I heard Hump Palmer say this perfectly today, that if LSU makes a, a seven uh, a seven seed and they get to the second round and they play a two, if they play like they did against uh, Tennessee, yep. then they can win. Um, is that kind of what you're thinking as well? Yeah, it has so much to do with draw. I mean, look at uh, look at Trent Johnson's first team at LSU. Uh, won the SEC, really good team, but the SEC was down. Their non-conference wasn't great, and so they got an eight seed in the tournament. Uh, beat Butler, who, by the way, uh, you know, went on to the national championship game the next two years after LSU beat them. And then in the second the second game, I was there, Greensboro, North Carolina. There's 23,000 people wearing blue and white rooting for North Carolina. Yep. Uh, and and by the way, I, I would think that North Carolina basketball fans aren't easily impressed. And there was a lot of ooh and, and ah. Like, did you just see that from Marcus Thornton and some of the shots he was hitting that day? And yep. LSU was right with him to the end, and then it, and they got away from him. So that, I think that's – you're exactly right. You don't right. want to fall in the 8-9 spot if you can somehow get up to the seven. Or somehow the six, if you make the SEC tournament. Or we could fall to the 10. And nobody's talking about that, huh? Let's fall to the 10. It might work out perfect for us. <laughs> what? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. All right. So baseball, real quick. We'll get you off we'll get you off of here. But uh what do you think about the opening weekend? I have tons of thoughts on baseball that we'll get to, obviously. But what what are your thoughts? Uh were you out there covering it all? Uh I was covering the basketball game Saturday, so I wasn't at that one. I was at the game Sunday, start to finish. Uh, that was a, uh, a rough game for, for uh, Will Helmers. Uh, Coach Maneri took the blame on that after the game, said, look, if you're going to blame somebody, blame me. He's inexperienced. I put him there. It's a tough spot, and the ball just found him, and it was a rough day. And uh, But still, uh, Marceau threw five shutout innings. He looked really good. Uh, the two runs were unearned. And uh, and you saw Trey Morgan you know, go opposite way when he hit it, I just thought it was going to be a fly ball caught, and then the thing went off the wall. He almost hit it opposite way out. So yep. Yep. I thought him and Dylan Cruz showed a lot of talent. I thought the pitching staff 
looked uh, really good. AJ Labus, you know, Monday was really a Sunday. That's your that's your third starter. He did not have a good time last night against Louisiana Tech. So go ahead, tell me what you uh, what you thought. <sighs> All right, so here's my here's my thoughts, and I'm gonna try to get Ben McDonald on because I. I I'm I'm looking at it more of at a national level, okay? So I know that um I know that LSU baseball traditionally with Paul Maneri too, we may get off to some slow starts. We'll lose a game here or there on a weekend series. We'll lose some uh, weekday series, uh, things like that. But this year is completely different in my opinion. Everybody is completely loaded. The SEC is absolutely loaded. Um, when I'm seeing, okay, this is supposed to be our loaded roster and we still are going to be struggling at the plate sometimes, um, against decent pitchers, not great pitchers. Wait till we play staffs like Mississippi state, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt. I mean, these guys, Vanderbilt, let's just take them for instance. They may have number one and number two drafted in the total draft, um, Kumar rocker. And then Jack lighter was throwing a hundred miles an hour. Like, I, I just don't see where we're going to have the offense to be able to compete in the SEC this year. Um, and I know it's you, we're way early, but I'm already looking at it like, okay, I, in my opinion, we're a little bit behind the eight ball um, already with this loaded roster. Uh, you're five recruiting classes in this year. That's yeah. kind of where I'm coming from. Yeah. Uh, I mean – Covering this, covering all these seasons, I guess this would be like 21 seasons since I've gotten into Baton Rouge. And I just always just tell myself whether they won by 15 or 15 nothing or lost 15 nothing early on or whatever, just let it play out. I mean, I, I just think there's so many of this, but up and down. I mean, you can you can stink in April and get hot and, and yeah. go away. I mean, 2017, when they reached the national championship, how many? Mid, they lost like every midweek game that year. Yeah. Uh, they lost to Tulane. They like, every time they played an in-state team, they lost. But uh, but no, I think you're right. I think you bring up some good points because certainly last year when the pandemic rolled in, they were not hitting. Um, I think Bianco was 074. They got no hit by Oklahoma and uh, Houston. Yeah. Um, and so you're counting on a lot of those same guys again with the additions of your Dylan Cruz and your Trey Morgans to, to kind of spice it up. But uh, I think you bring up some good points. Yes, the SEC is loaded. The good news is LSU might be ninth or eighth in the country. The bad news is there are three or four teams ranked in front of them. Uh, yeah, and, and that's one of the reasons why – all right, so um, Saturday everybody had to freak out about, you know, Devin Fano is not coming back in the game. And I know it's a young season and – uh, he didn't want to. He didn't want to pull him uh, like twenty three pitches to the next night, you know, and close out the second game. My concern is you need this win um, because what I'm fearful of is that when we get into the heat of SEC and you guys aren't like at the same level as some of these other teams, and you're they're predicted like maybe fourth in the West here. You need those wins early in the season now. Uh, to make up for that. And that was a lost opportunity, in my opinion, to just get a – we just needed a win, get out of there with a win. Um, that's kind of where our, my thought is. It's just a different year. I, And I, that's why I'm wanna, I want to talk to some people that have uh, – and we'll get some people on that, that have watched these other teams now. And I know Ben was here in Baton Rouge, so he, he hasn't seen them yet. But just some people that have seen, like, Vanderbilt, seen Ole Miss. I mean, you saw the SEC performance in uh, – in Arlington this past weekend where they just crushed uh, the big 12. Um, you know, that's kind of what I want to see. I I heard right. today uh, Mississippi state, they looked great in Arling Arlington. Their number two and number three pitcher didn't even make the trip. So it's like, that's how loaded some of these teams are. Right. Um, and I know we are with the pitching staff. It just, I'm hoping the offense can kind of round it in and kind of compliment them. Kind of like what we were just talking about with basketball a little bit. They just need a little bit more compliment of that offense that can kind of go together. Yeah. And there is a palpable tension. You can feel there's this tension. There's this, I mean, if you watched Maneri's post game last night, yeah. third game into a 56 game schedule. And he's talking about, you know, people are talking about us on social media and people are talking about us on Twitter and they're saying bad things and they're criticizing. And that, the fact that that is that kind of stuff is already kind of coming to the surface. The third game in February is I mean, I don't know if it's, you know, 
and no matter who you are, after 10, 15 years, some people are tired of looking at you. Okay. And this is Maneri's 15th year. And, uh, you know, uh, he's been great to me the whole time he's been here and, uh, and everything. But, uh, I, 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 when I interviewed Scott Woodward the other day, I told him, I, th I said, a lot of times I feel like this is the toughest job on campus, you know, because, um, what's expected and whatever, uh, you know, the basketball team goes to sweet 16, everyone's thrilled. LSU goes to what's the sweet 16 at super regional and they lose. Everyone's ticked. You know, you, you're supposed to yeah. go further. So, right. but they've got a lot of resources. They've got that stadium. They've got the history. They've got the passionate fans. And so a lot is expected as well. But I, I did feel a lot of like tension already uh, way too much too early. Yeah. And it's really weird when you see Ole Miss right now, like the number one in the country, um, they got all this buzz. Uh, Ole Miss Twitter, Ole Miss baseball Twitter is just like something else right now. I don't know if you saw that, but like they're tweeting. Is Lane running it? I don't know. <laughs> it's whoever's running their old, their social media accounts. We probably need to give them a call. But um, yeah, they're like, I mean, people are just like tweet heckling. It's just an entire Texas baseball. athletic it's department just crazy. change. Yes, when it, Lane Kiffin came in. It's now. the attitude <laughs> it, that I'm just like, man. That used to be that was if we had Twitter back in the '90s, that was us. Like we were those guys, and that's kind of what I'm thinking of is you know the level that we're we're trying to get at to. Um, well, I see some tweets sometimes from accounts and wonder with the head coach of that team that is playing right now, would he be okay with what you just tweeted? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, hey, that's hockey. Shut up, okay? You know, we let let's you know uh, let, let's let's simmer down a little bit, not be so sassy, okay? <laughs> It would be literally things back on me, not you. So, yeah, right. um, Nick Saban would just shut out, shut out all social media in general, right? Yeah. Oh my God! Just be communism all over again. <laughs> well, I, I guess I guess that shows us that we that we've all got it wrong, and he's got it right. Uh, the, the, best, right. Uh, the best coach in college football history does not have a Twitter account, so maybe he's uh -huh. uh, get it right, and we're all wrong. So. <laughs> all right, Jack, we appreciate it. We're gonna get you off here. Um, LSU about to tip off, so we'll let you get right. at that. Um, we appreciate all your time. You guys go check out Jock Talk. Where can we find that, Jock? Uh, I'll tweet it tomorrow with links and everything. So if you follow me on uh, on Twitter, I'll, I'll be sure that you see it. I, I don't know what's going to look like myself. You know, I, I guess it's just like the, uh, you know, it's like a play device. You got the play button and you, there'll be an audio version and a video version, I guess. So. Jeez, Jack, did we not teach you anything <laughs> on Sensor on the Subject? Did we not get look, you? Look, man, I'm impressed. You know, I don't have any whiskey, whatever the heck you guys oh, got in the middle right know. there. You know? Um, I've got to get. We, we're sponsored by Bogies now, so we have it all set up. Uh, Clayton says hello, by the way. So, uh, yeah. So we'll have to get you on. We're gonna do a, a live stream at Bogies. We'll get you on at Bogies. How about that? Bogies has been huge to Red Rock and Blue. One of the first sponsors mm -hmm. ever uh, in Red Rock and Blue history was Bogies. I didn't know that. Okay. I didn't know that. That's Maybe awesome. We have an end of the game now. Yeah, we can we can be in the Red Rock and Blue yeah. game now, sponsored by Bogies. Uh, <laughs> if if we ever get to it again, right? Exactly. I don't know what we're going to do this summer, so we'll see. But, uh, They're going to bring up a bad subject uh, on the way out. But, well, no, uh, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, you know, it's just uh, we'll, we'll have the tournament, but this celebrity game, I don't know when we're going to have it again or whatever. So we'll see. Oh, that was a lot of fun. All right, Jock. We appreciate it, buddy. Um, we'll we'll catch up with you again. All right, buddy? All right. So I click this leave button. Is that what I got doing? you. I'll do it myself. <laughs> you do whatever. You do whatever you want. All right. Talk to you soon. All right. See you guys. All right bye. All right, guys, Jacques Doucet um, with WFB. We are going to take a quick break, if you don't mind, and yep. we're going to get the game set up. You guys stick around. We're going to do a live stream during the game. Yep. Um, and it's 4-4 currently. It's 4-4 four to four right now? Oh, mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be like a 6-10 tip off or something it's like actually, that. Actually, I'm going to say it's 5-4 because God Cam's, damn it. Cam's shooting a, a free throw. That's That's automatic. All right, so let me get the game on. You guys stick around with yeah, us. Give us some chats in the uh, – whatever y'all want us to talk about, we'll talk to you about during yeah. the game. All right, be right back. Ether Insurance is dedicated to helping the businesses and people of Baton Rouge secure affordable insurance tailored to their needs. With our curated network of insurance carriers, we provide the best solutions for home, auto, life, and business coverage. Ether Insurance, powering and protecting your world. 2020 took a toll on all of us. If you're going through a divorce or custody issue, let Dejan Law Office be by your side in 2021. Dejan Law Office. Is fighting for what you deserve. 344 Andy. 
Brandon Lejean here, courtesy Buick GMC. Call Brandon Lejean at 337-224-1867. Come see us today, courtesy Buick GMC. Ether Insurance is dedicated to helping the businesses and people of Baton Rouge secure affordable insurance tailored to their needs. With our curated network of insurance carriers, we provide the best solutions for home, auto, life, and business coverage. Ether Insurance, powering and protecting your world. 2020 took a toll on all of us. If you're going through a divorce or custody issue, let Dejan Law Office be by your side in 2021. Dejan Law Office, fighting for what you deserve. 344-ANDY. Brandon Lejean here, courtesy Buick GMC. Call Brandon Lejean at 337-224-1867. Come see us today, courtesy Buick GMC. All right, guys, we are back. Um, I had to get the... Uh, the game on so we could start watching it with you guys. Um, give us some, uh, let's see. Devin, Steve, I don't know if you're still in there, but uh, just don't get swept in the SEC. I completely agree with you. Um, but it really you need to be two two out of three for um, SEC series for baseball, is my opinion. Yeah. That's what I think. I think if you, if you stay two out of three, you're 20 and 10 at the end. Um, you're set up for a super regional whenever yeah. you do it that way. Right. Um, yeah, so what does, uh, I guess you don't really know yet, but, uh, I don't really know either of what the, uh, what the rest of the SEC looks like. I know you know a little bit more than me though. So bro, so our right. share Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt alone. Um, dude, Jack lighter is there. Um, Jack lighter. Jack okay. lighter is the son of Al lighter. Al lighter was a famous, major league pitcher back in the day okay jack lighter he's one of those guys that came on campus that should never be at on campus and he is a um yeah i know you like that yes sir i'll i'll um look i'll move that over so you can see that uh htm but um he's a guy that should have never been on campus to begin with because of the major league baseball draft and how they shortened it and all that some of these guys are on campus that should have never been there. Dylan Cruz is one of them. He should never be on campus. No, he would be in no. the minors right now on a normal year. Right. And that's what's happening is a lot of these guys are coming in, and that's why you're so stacked. Like, a guy that's 100, throws 100 miles an hour, bro. Like, 100? He throws 100. <laughs> oh he had a three-pitch sequence uh, yesterday. It was 199 and a 98. And so he's going to be at Vanderbilt for three years? He's a three-year guy. Holy shit. I know. Baseball is crazy, man. With that three years thing, I always forget about it because I was thinking about Cruz. I was like, man, Cruz is there gonna... for three fucking years. Yeah. No, I was thinking about Cruz the other day, and I was like, oh man, we're only gonna have him for one more year. Oh man, and I was like, oh wait, shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's the same thing with Bregman. Bregman should have never yeah. been on campus, but it just he had an injury and all yeah. this stuff happened, and it was like you just land these guys. All right, right so we're seven to six right now. Seven six. That's right. That's a great <sighs> pass. Man, I, you know, I dude, love these Andre gold Hyatt, uniforms. I do though, too. Right? This, this, it feels like we're gonna start a a, a run in these uniforms. You know, you want just all oh, like gold jersey baseball. Yeah, like exactly. That's, jersey, that's exactly uh, what I'm thinking. Oh boy. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, Andre okay. Hyatt needs to get stronger finishing. Don't you think? I feel like I see him get blocked so often. He's got such a good body yeah. to him. Um, and that was one of those guys that I just. We had heard that he was going to start and all that. George is trying to speed us up here. It's bizarre. We had, we had heard that they were going to start. All right, so guys, I'm drinking a little uh, Jefferson Reserve right now. So I just I had a little bit of uh, whistle big whistle pig uh, piggyback. Now I'm finishing off my Je Jefferson Reserve. Empty the bottle. Be on the lookout tomorrow. We're going to do the Durante Jones Bourbon Club from the back patio. Nice. You want to come over? Sure. All right. Um, you'll be our little gallery. I'm yeah okay um <laughs> we have it. yeah we're gonna have the oak hills bourbon club is gonna come and they're going to uh be in the gallery and talking shit and you know laughing and all that yeah. in the background 
And then um, we're going to have Taylor Calandro from Calandro's over. And we're going to do a little bit of bourbon tasting. And we're going to talk. Uh, oh, Taylor Calandro's coming over here? Yeah, he's going to come oh, over yeah. in the backyard. I don't know if he's going to bring. I'm, I'm hoping he's going to bring some bourbon. Uh-huh. I didn't actually have that conversation uh-huh. with him. He's a big golfer. Yeah, I, I saw that. Golf. We need to talk. We need to talk to him about that a little bit. Too. I, just, I just know every time he comes on Matt Moscona, he's always like at a golf course or something. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay, we'll talk about that. It, it seems like that at least. All right, so um, George is getting to the line. Yeah. Are we not? Well, thirteen in. Um, I mean, seven in. Six in. Yeah, no, but yeah, if you round correctly, Mark. Um. <laughs> Seven points doesn't seem like normal for us. Are we a little cold? Uh, I don't know. I haven't really been paying enough attention. I also missed like the first four dude, minutes or so. Tiger Woods. What's going on with that, man? Oh, dude. I don't know about you, but I got the exact... like Because Kobe's like right around a year ago at this point. Yeah. Maybe, maybe a little over a year. You got the um, same feeling. The exact same. I got the update from ESPN. Tiger Woods in a car in a car accident, a solo single car accident, mm-hmm. uh, hospitalized. All this. I'm like, oh, okay, my day's ruined. Uh, so I turned on Fox News, and it the second they said it was non life threatening, I turned off the turned off the TV and went I back did, to work. But I did just see a blurb on the bottom there that said something there in DUI. Yeah, that's that ain't I, good. I, I I highly doubt that it has anything to do with alcohol, but because it you was painkiller, because it was seven in the morning. Yeah, I think it could be painkillers because he did just have surgery like a week and a half ago or something. Did you see him on TV the other day? I know you yeah, tweeted that out. Looked a little glossy eyed, but uh, Sheesh, he looked fat faced. Yeah, yeah, he looked uh, he did, he looked tired. He, he looked had tired. the oxy face. Yeah, yeah. Everybody knows what the oxy face is. <laughs> He looked a little happy. Yeah. Yeah. He was he was feeling uh foggy. Yeah. Oh man. I, I fucking want to get this shit together. Camp's yeah, so good so in paint. Good. We got a bunch of dudes that are really good at floaters. Yeah, we do. Actually, you know, I think it's just two guys. But you know, well, who? Who's your two guys? Cam and uh Javante. Oh, Jalen Cook, brother. Jalen Cook does have a good floater. That's a good he point. He does. I feel like Eric Gaines should have a good floater, but he kind of just never – I've Eric, never really seen him hit a floater. But Eric Gaines is so aggressive at the rim, yeah. man. He's, I love it. Man, I was talking about him when we were sitting at those seats from uh, from Brandon Stewart. Mm-hmm. Uh, so awesome seats, by the way. Like, yeah. those are fantastic. I knew, I knew which seats he was giving yeah. to. So Holy I know. shit. Those are phenomenal. They're right behind but, the bowl. Yeah, so I was with uh, a couple friends, and we um, – we were watching Eric Gaines and I was like, man, you can see it with him, but he is just so out of control when he gets the ball. Yeah. But it's, you, you can see it. I love watching him play defense because he has such active hands. Yeah. Oh, oh, Cam he's Thomas. so good. Oh, it's fucking wonderful. How is Cam Thomas so good at getting at, at drawing fouls? It's unbelievable. It's, he, it's his pump fakes. He, and he flails around a little bit, too. Yeah, he does. He's, he's just so good with body control, yep. and he knows where the other guy is. Um, and he's just, to me, the reason why he's going to be a really good NBA player. Oh, look at that. Dude, I fucking Javante. love. How about this lineup? This is awesome. Oh, LeBlanc, come on, give it up to Days. LeBlanc, Days. Oh, that's not a good shot. Uh, LeBlanc, Days, Cam Thomas, Javante, and Gaines. I love it. It's a lot of defense and plenty of offense. You remember back? It was the very beginning of the year when they were doing a lot of press, and it was when, um, and it was when LeBlanc got healthy, and I think it was around that Arkansas game where they blew him out. It was oh yeah, yeah, yeah. part of, part of their lineup was when LeBlanc gains, and then uh, Cook was still playing a good bit. Uh-huh. When those three were on the floor, their plus minus. I mean, it had to be through yeah, the roof. That's funny. Nope, it's not. I mean, how does he miss wide open shots and then he makes all these contested ones? I don't understand. He's more comfortable. He he just he's he he's pra- better he, in the lane. You can he, tell he practices. I know. I know. Cam, so much. Cam Thomas is a good um, a good three point shooter, but he could be. I mean, he could be way way better than than what he is. But he's he's actually a better like mid range and like in the paint scorer, in my opinion. Than he is like yeah, I actually I agree. Um, 
I mean, he he can hit that crazy three, which is like yeah, you know, you you drool over but what's that his as an percentage. NBA. It's got to be like thirty percent. It's it's and, it's uh, like thirty two ish. That's um, not good. It's not good, but the reason you drool over that is because he's so good at hitting contested threes yeah. that you know that he's going to develop into a really good uh, three point. Or he could develop into a really like, really good three point shooter. Like Javante, Javante's right now a good three point shooter. And he's got that shot. Right. Javante's got that shot that we all like love because it just like it's a white boy shot. It is, yeah, it is a well, white boy like, set shot. I just love he gets he he's so good with his elbow and his wrist flick. It's just perfect. Yeah, like he gets it all lined up so well. You, you saw he's he's raised his three point percentage by twelve percent this year. Yeah, it's huge. Thirty three to forty five. I, yeah, when I saw, I think it was forty four. I saw the other day. So. Yeah, okay. I'm sure you're was, probably right. That was a couple weeks ago that I posted that stat. My but gosh. It might go down. 44, 45% three yeah. point shoot. That's big time. <laughs> that's serious. That's, that's He's got the range. Next, that's the next level. He's got range, yeah. too. Yeah. Which I, you know, last year, I think that was the conversation we were having was like, all right, who's going to come back from the draft, all that kind of stuff. And yeah. like, you know, we were like, Javante, he's not going to get drafted. Like, what's right. he doing, man? And he, he's, he's, come back and he's shown where he can shoot the ball at like an NBA level. It feels like it's his last year. I think so too. Um, yeah, I, I think a lot a big problem that a lot of these guys have is they I look still at don't know if he's going to be a first round pick and they get people in their ear that say stuff like, yeah, I don't really know how much higher you can go from this point. That's a problem. Uh, and it is a problem. Uh, and to be fair, it's rare that the, the Kimball Walker, final season happens or the Shabazz Napier final season happens. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not common, but, uh, you know, it's, it's not impossible. Um, and like you could be better off Tremont, right? Tremont, right. Uh, yeah. Who, who Tremont added, could be on this team, right? He would be a senior this year. Yeah. Can you imagine if we had Tremont waters as a senior point guard right now? <laughs> No, I can't imagine that. We would be. What if we? Oh, well, I mean, I guess it's hard to talk about Nas because he's starting for the Timberwolves now. But um, yeah, and the reason why I say Tremont is that he was a D League guy, but right. um, and he's still not getting good minutes. Yeah, and he's Dude, fuck the Celtics, man. They keep drafting point guards. Yeah, because the, the the problem that Tremont had is they drafted him with uh, was it Carson Carson Edwards? Edwards, and then they just last year I didn't even realize, but they uh, Jordan Pritchard. The uh, little white guy from uh, from Oregon. Okay, uh, and he's playing a lot for Clem, uh, the Celtics right now. So yeah, and Tremont, he's on the team on like the NBA team, right? Right, but, but he doesn't play. Doesn't play. He doesn't play. Um, speaking of Celtics, you saw that Pelicans game the other day. I, I a little bit. I didn't get to watch all of it. 20, I need to start watching more Pelicans. Down, I'm not down, watching enough Pelicans. We were down right 24. Now. We won the game in overtime. That's okay. Biggest comeback in franchise history. And that was coming off the day where they had the uh, a big comeback loss against the Suns, right? Yeah. Uh, not the day after, but it was like it was a couple like days a later, day next or two, game yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like it's um, exciting nonetheless, right? Yeah. Oh man, it's a <laughs> dude. It's a huge turnaround because. When the, I when I checked that score and we were down by twenty two when I checked it, mm -hmm. I was like, man, the Pelicans are freaking falling off the face of the earth right now. Yeah. And then you you get that win. That's about as big of a win that we've had all season. Yeah. Uh, maybe the biggest win we've had all season. Yeah. Uh, uh, Celtics are a fucking good team too. I saw a few highlights of uh, Zion uh -huh. that I was just like, oh my god, this guy's just rounding into form yeah. now. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, and if we can, there there are rumors that we're we're gonna try to we're gonna take our best shot at getting Bradley Beal. Um, and if we if we get back Bradley Beal on this team, you know, you maybe get rid of uh, get rid of Lonzo, get rid of uh, JJ Redick. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think this team is going to be serious. You think they'll do that at the trade deadline? Yeah, I, I think so, it's pretty clear at this point that we're going to make some some moves. Lonzo. Ball and um, JJ, JJ Reddick, Reddick and gone. Then we got a ton of uh, draft picks. Yeah, and so you would, um, you would. Who would be your uh, point guard at that point? Eric Bledsoe. Okay, and then you got um, you got what's Kyra, his name on Kyra the bench? Lewis yeah, is, from Alabama uh, is starting to play well. Nikhil was playing. Nikhil Alexander Walker was playing well to start the year, but he mm -hmm. kind of kind of fell off a little bit. He's just inconsistent. He has an inconsistency problem. Um, but he's still very young. Yeah, he's only in his second year. Um. But I mean, you know, he's a uh, he he can come off the bench sometimes. 
Um, not a ton. But when you have a guy like Bradley Beal, it's not that big of a deal because Bradley Beal's going to play, you know, 32 minutes a game. Tremont was trying to do too much there. Trendon? Tre- Trendon, sorry. <laughs> um, white boy took the charge. <laughs> Don't ever drive. Man. Don't ever drive on a white guy with a uh, with like a part in his hair. He's going <laughs> to take the charge. I was watching Coach Carter today. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, there, there's a scene where he uh, he, he takes, turned um, guy takes a charge and he uh, and the guy on the other team like starts fighting him because he took a charge. Oh really? Yeah. He uh, he turned Channing Tatum into a good role role player. Yeah, true, true. Was that the? Uh, that was was that before uh magic mike yeah that was okay so before that was, magic mike was that what else had channing tatum been in at, the, at that point uh there was like a dancing mute movie or something like that okay um i don't remember what it was called gotcha okay dude josh long is so long our biggest fear is not that we are inadequate <laughs> is that from the movie i don't yeah. remember our I biggest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure oh i know who you're talking about <laughs> I hate that line. It doesn't make any sense. Um, oh, look at look at Josh. Was away from the tour after undergoing. Okay. I was trying to read the bottom of the screen. Oh, okay. the Tiger Woods stuff. Oh. Said there are no oh. signs of impairment. Actually, no signs of impairment. But he, that's what the sheriff department said. I saw multiple fractures in his leg and then a crushed ankle. Ooh, who was that? Yeah, it was sounded like Cam? it sounded like his ankle was shattered. Um I was worried that he broke both of them legs. I mean, do you think he's ever playing again? Uh, I'm, with I'll, an injury like I'll wait, this. I'll wait until tomorrow to see what the exact uh deal is with it, but I'm I'm worried. <sighs> Step back. Oh, uh, he, he, he would have hit that. He was on fire. Yeah. The NBA jam on fire thing would have came up. I didn't play NBA jam, so. You never played NBA jam? No. Oh, my God. Just we, 2K. We need to play some um, old school basketball. Play some double dribble. I, I need to go here. find my uh, my old PS2. Go play some, uh, some NCAA 2009. <laughs> I've told you my NCAA basketball stories, huh? I think yeah. it was on PlayStation. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've ever told him on the podcast, though. Do we need to talk about that? Yeah, I think you do. I don't remember I what need, year it was. I think you need to tell that story. That, this would have been, all right, we were just talking to Jock about um, 1999, 2000 year. Yeah. And I, I bet you this was like 99, and I was in college, and I was, me and my roommate, I would get up in the morning, and we had different class schedules, and I would get up in the morning and um, go to work, or it might have been vice versa. Maybe I was going to early classes and then he would go to work. And then when he got home, um, he would play a game. And so we were basically playing like LSU and we had a, a season that we were playing like a dynasty or whatever. Okay. And this is basketball. Basketball. Yeah. And um, I can't even remember who had been on the team back then. Probably <laughs> Jabari Smith and okay Brian Bridgewater or whatever. Um so uh, I would play a game, and then he would play a game. I would play a game, and he would play a game. And we would just alternate. And so um, until we got to the final game, and then we go to the tournament, and, like, we're in the finals. It's the national championship game. Right. And uh, we're playing UConn. I'll never forget it. Uh-huh. And um, we beat UConn on a last-second shot. <laughs> um, and we go <laughs> fucking nuts. Like, we're like, ah! going crazy in the and in, in the thing um and about 15 minutes later we get a knock on the door and uh my roommate answered the door and he was like um it's the police and he's like sir we had a noise complaint and uh kevin white i'll never forget it he was like oh i'm sorry man i'm sorry you know we thing is we were playing our our MCAA PlayStation basketball game. <laughs> and we got a little excited because we won the national championship on a last <laughs> second shot. He like goes into detail with the guy and I could see the, uh, the police officer's face was just like, <sighs> he was like, 
just fucking keep it down. All right. <laughs> and then he walks away. And like my roommate closes the door and like we hear we can hear the guy walking down the steps. And when he walked down the steps, we were like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh so me and William were doing a similar thing. We were uh we were nickels. Um and we were uh, making yeah. we were making a, a tournament run or we were trying to. Um <laughs> and so we were the 16 seed playing against Michigan State, the one seed. Yeah. And we made this big comeback. Uh we took the lead late. Uh and I was I was playing as nickels, William was playing as Michigan State. <laughs> and uh I think I I scored a bucket to like you know go up by two with uh, maybe second left, mm-hmm. and William just like fucking around. He passes it in, shoots a three quarter course shot, and makes it. Oh, <laughs> so the season's over. Oh my god, <laughs> that was brutal. We, we were just we were just dead silent for like ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was great. Those are good times, dude. Um, we right. always named our coach Poopy Fart. Poopy Fart. Mm-hmm. Did you? Uh, are you excited about the new football game coming out? It'd be um, in two years, so yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm excited about it. I, I'm excited to not play NCAA 14 anymore. Um, I'm getting sick of all the uh, Kirk Herb Street isms. They're, yeah. they're getting really stale. You don't just put the volume down at this point. You see, I would, but like, I got to hear the whistle, you know, because I got no one to stop. Yeah, you know, I don't want to hit a quarterback late. Um, I'm so out of the video game. So I probably stopped playing video games. I only play ten years ago. I don't even play football video games anymore. I um, I play NHL actually. That's I've, fun. Which, which I found is the most fun video game in sports. Oh really? Yeah. No. Like it's like a new a new one. Yeah. Like NHL NHL. I have twenty. Okay. So not the current one, but last year's. I used to play some old school NHL Dude, games. That's a fun that were game. Fun it's like back in the have day. you ever played FIFA? Yeah, same thing. It's like it's like FIFA on crack. Wow. Like it's just so much faster. I like FIFA. Yeah, FIFA's FIFA was funny. always very uh, realistic to me. Yeah, it is. Oh man, we used to play a lot of FIFA. Me and Charlie used to play a lot of FIFA. Josh LeBlanc just makes such a difference on this team. Yeah. I mean, he's just you know a very willing rebounder and six seven, but he feels like six nine. Well, his wingspan, I swear to God, is like seven six. At least it looks like that. Oh, he's got this. Hit it. He's yeah. got to start hitting some of these outside shots. Yeah, I'm, I'm sick of him taking these and not hitting them. You know, yeah, well, Javante makes them. I mean, Javante, such a good three point shooter. Yeah, yeah, you know, he's a guy. He he makes it when he's open. I would love to know what his percentage is when he's like wide open. Yeah. I bet it's really, really high. And Cam's, it feels like, isn't very high. You know, Cam is one of those guys, though. If he has a hand in his face, he shoots a little bit better. That's just weird. Does it make any sense? I know a few people like that that just like they shoot better with a hand in their face. Like William, actually. William shoots so much better with it with, if you just step up to him. Mm hmm. But if you if you give him some space, he he usually breaks it. They don't have all right. So there's that bad that so nobody's even in the stands. That can't be correct. <laughs> Look at it. No, there are a few people actually. There are a few, but there's not a lot. No, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Like I'm pointing out, there's a few to show that they're allowed to be there. So they're allowed to be there, but they, they don't just want don't want to go there. <laughs> Jeez, that sucks, Good huh? Lord. That's got to be really bad for. Maybe uh, they're just selling like very limited seats in those sections. You know what I mean? And maybe there's more people up top. I don't know. It is. It's not a good look for Georgia basketball. I'll tell you that. Nobody cares. (laughs) They're thirteen and nine. It's not like they're, you know, losing season or anything. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm surprised they're actually this good. uh, Coming off the Anthony Edwards year. Yeah. No, they didn't fall off the face of the earth they, like we did after Ben Simmons. They were actually worse last year, right? Rec- so. Record-wise, huh? Is that right? I don't know. I'd have to look that up. I, don't, I can't remember. I, nice I, I, I feel like I remember they were gonna. They were probably going to make the NIT if it would have been played. Man, Mawani Wilkinson is so good. He's so freaking athletic. He's a freshman, too. Yeah. Like, I love it. Yeah, he is. He's the, like the clone of Marlon Taylor. Yeah. Well, that was one of those guys we talked about. Uh, come on, Trent. 
Trinan's got to show so a little bit more soft. effort there. I know. Um, he was one of those guys that we were talking about where he, the guy comes from like a big program, Bishop, uh, Bishop Gorman in Las, yeah. Las Vegas. Like he's, it's an easy transition for him to the, Come on, trending, dude. Oh my goodness, he's just not. He's not good enough to do that kind of stuff. He's just like not good. He's good in situations, but he needs to get the ball up, bro. Dude, okay, like, he needs to just stay in the fucking post on offense. Mm-hmm. Like, because he's got great moves. I don't want him with the ball. I don't right want here. him in the key like that. Last year was fine, but now now people are crashing on him. Oh, it's like, yeah, he's a good dribbler for his size, but he's not, he's not a good dribbler. Yeah. God damn. You, actually, I was talking about this the other day about how LSU like misused Ben Simmons like grossly yeah. when he was here. Yeah. And, you know, he played a lot in like the high post and the low post even. Uh, and like they just rarely played on the perimeter. And it was so terrible. They said, "Where are we at with the at the game? Um, twenty eight to twenty three with four eighteen left. I yeah. might maybe I'm a little behind. Are, are you okay? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let me check my phone. I'm on Hulu, so I don't know. Let me check my phone, see where the actual score is. But yeah, so we were talking about Ben Simmons. Yeah, that's the score right now. Okay. That's, that's what my phone says. Um. Yeah, yeah, Ben Simmons. And uh, you know, he should have been he should have been the point guard. Uh I know we had Tim Quarterman on, on that team, but you know, yeah. he should have uh, he should have kicked Tim Quarterman to the two, let him play off off ball. Yep. And let Ben Simmons run that offense. I mean, he has easily the best court vision in all of college basketball. Maybe the highest basketball IQ in all of college basketball that year. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and more than anything, Ben Simmons needed the ball in his hands. He should have been playing the way that we're trying to force Trenton Watford to play. Yeah. And Trenton Watford should be playing the way that we force Ben Simmons to play. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, um, absolutely. I just, I don't, I don't get why. Um, I mean, like, you know, back then I, I understand like Johnny Jones, just not that good of a coach. It's fine. I, I've, I've made my peace with that. Right. But like, whoa, Wade, you know, I feel like he, he, he knows what he's doing. Well, here. and it's kind of what we were talking with Jacques is, you know, I think what Will Wade has realized is that he was trying to help out Trendon probably a little too much with NBA draft stock oh, great kind of thing. That was a great pass. Get pass. Come on. No, not hitting the shots outside. Or <clears throat> um, but having him like. They are. Yeah, they are. Having him pull the ball up, bring the ball up. That was helping him with his draft stock. Yeah. And I think now it's time to. All right, let's kick it in. Yeah, let's here. let's win some games. Yep. Um, and I, I I do agree. I think you, you're definitely seeing him do that less. Mm-hmm. Um, like for example, uh, that Tennessee game. I feel like we were super efficient on both sides of the ball. And you go back and look at the the box score. Trenton Watford, his you know his his footprint on that game is is very small. Yeah. Uh, not very small, but small for what he's used to. You know, mm-hmm. he's usually shooting. I think like maybe 15 shots a game or something like that. And that game, he only shot eight times. Right. Um, and he, he was very efficient. He, I think he was like six of eight or something like that. And like, that's great. Yeah. Like, if we can get Trenton Watford to be efficient on offense, I would way prefer that to hit him shooting, you know, six of eight than rather than him shooting, uh, you know, like eight of 15. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, just forcing a bunch of shots inside because that six of eight and being efficient like that is probably because of a lot of ball movement. Yeah. And, you know, the more he gets the ball out of his hands, I think is going to be better for him, honestly. As, you know, I mean, I, maybe it sounds like I'm shitting on him, but, like, I honestly think that, like, the more he tries to play off ball is going to be a lot better for him. And he's going to – I don't know. I feel like he could play a lot better if he, if he focused more on being an off-ball mm-hmm. offensive guy rather than – uh, trying to do it all himself. I agree with that. Um, do you feel like, I mean, do you feel like Javante could be a point guard in the NBA? 
Um, you, all right, let's back that he, up. He's he has he. I mean, I don't know if he can be a point a true point guard, but he's always going to be a combo guard. Yeah. Do you think that? Um, is there anybody? Well, Cam Thomas. I think we're gonna we we think that he'll be a first round pick. Yeah. Is there anybody else that could be a first round pick on this team? Like this year or no? This year? No, yeah. not this year. No. Um, so if anybody else comes out, they aren't going to be in the first round, and they'll be a um, maybe Javante because he shoots so well, but uh, probably not. I mean, I feel like I've seen. Plenty I, I, of, I don't. Think I feel Javante's. like I've seen plenty of Javante Smarts come out of the, come out of the, uh, come out of college basketball. Yeah, and you know they they're at best early second round guys. Like you know if if Carson Edwards. Was, uh, can't get drafted. Yeah, if he, yeah. Well, no, he. he I, I mean, he, not not drafted, but drafted in the first round. I mean. Right. Yeah. No. No. He. I mean, he was. Uh, if he can't get higher than the early second round after the freaking year he had at Purdue. Yeah. I, I don't see how Javante is going to do anything better than that. Although, I mean, he is a little bit taller. Maybe plays a little bit better defense. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's probably a little bit more athletic. Um, if he if he he go, if he goes on a Carson Edwards esque <laughs> NCAA tournament run. Yeah. Then yeah, I think he would be a late first round pick actually. But yeah, that's tough to do. I mean, the level that he played at the end of that year was yeah, fucking it was awesome. it was like Shabazz Napier, like we were talking. <laughs> right. about. It was like Steph Curry. I yeah, mean, right. It was like that that level of a tournament run that he was on. Yeah, that it just brings me back to like, if you guys aren't gonna get drafted in the first round, what are you doing, man? Right. Like. I, I I do I do think a lot of these guys they come out thinking that they've peaked, yeah. Um, and they think that uh, even if let's they go ahead and get peaked, a paycheck now, right? And not waste another year, right? Exactly. Like let's yeah. let's start making the money at, at, as soon as possible. Although I mean, it's not like they're not making money right now. Let's be honest. But I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, will they be pay, taking a pay cut? That'd be the question. I, I don't know. Um. um uh oh what a pass i mean i do know that uh will wade uh cut javante a deal that he uh strong ass deal he is strong ass offer uh for his scholarship right (laughs) for uh the a deal that he uh he's given much less to uh (laughs) similar uh three-year guys like javante um Gosh, look at that pass. So we aren't looking good right here. Uh, we no. need to kick it in to, to gear. Why are it? We are not playing well on offense. Is the problem? Yeah, no, we're just not hitting shots right now. Um, you know, I don't feel like. I mean, the there there is some ball movement missing, but I feel like it. It the ball movement's been about the same. Twenty four points with two minutes left. It's got to be a, a low for us this year. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like. I mean, we could have more. Oh, that's a bucket. No, I th- really thought that was in. Gotta get the rebound, bro. Jeez. Yeah, they're not they're not rebounding well. I, I think there's a lack of focus right now. Is what it feels like. Yep. I feel like we are gonna come out in the second half a lot better. Um, maybe I'm just being optimistic. Um, Chris okay. Landry in the chat. He said, "Oh hey." Um, nice. Then uh, he says, "Is days." Just a badass college baller. Y'all think he's an NBA caliber? I do. Um, now I don't. The he problem has is to get better at playing on the perimeter if he wants to be in the NBA. I think the problem you're going to have with Days is his height, and yeah. I, I don't think he's going to get drafted in the first round. I do think he's going to make an NBA team, and I think he's going to be a contributor. Um, I don't see him getting drafted. You don't see him getting drafted at all. No. no. I. You think he's coming out this year? Um, sheesh. I don't think he should. I th- I kind of feel like he would stay, honestly, if I had to make a guess right now. Mm-hmm. Um, cause yeah, I think you know, I think I would hope that he sees like the same kind of things we see. Um, with the Draymond Green comparison, yeah, and, like, that's my that, comparison. Like, that's that's Draymond what Green. He needs to be clone. And, but the thing is. Draymond Green stayed until he was a senior, by the way. Exactly. He stayed until he was senior. And also, Draymond Green had a lot better guard skills, you know, throughout college. And Draymond and uh, Darius Days doesn't have that. Yep. Um, 
And that's why Draymond Green is so successful in the NBA is because one, also Draymond Green's a significantly better defender. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's you know maybe a top five defender in the NBA still. Um, oh, here's a question for you. Ooh, what's that? Step back. Stop. Um, Stop doing that. Yeah, I know. Uh, Fucking get to the rim. What the fuck? How good would LSU be right now if they had Emmett Williams on the team? Slightly better. Slightly better. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I don't know, actually. Because you know now he's not doing much. I mean, he's in, the, right. he's in Europe, I think. Right. He never was it, – it, it never seemed like he was going to do much. Um, but what he, he had some personal reasons that he left for. Yeah, right? so I think it was – he has a, he a child. Kid, right. and, yeah, all that kind of stuff. Right. They look really um, bad, Huey says. Yes, I agree. They look we're not look, twenty four points with a minute left we're settling. uh is a problem. Yeah. Uh thirty seven from Georgia is not uncommon for us no. to give up this. That's, but at this point, typically we would have forty at this least. This is this is pretty on brand defensively. But uh, uh we're we're typically on pace for eighty plus. So for us to only have twenty four right now is a an issue. And look, I mean, that's just a lazy pass. Yeah, we're we're getting. Oh, come on! Here goes. If the... he shoots a fucking three, <laughs> he's oh, got such good touch. Javante. I that feel was a like big he, shot. when he shoots, he wants to put it on like the very front of the rim so it can just bounce on in like that. That was a big shot. Yeah, that was one. That was a big one. Um, if you can finish this half. You know, like down eleven, that would be a success at this point. Does Trent and Wadford always just look lazy to you? Yes, always. And every, even when he's not lazy, he still looks lazy. Yeah, he, dude, he just looks <laughs> fucking slow. <laughs> and and it, it does. It just looks lazy. It just I don't know how to explain it other than that. Yep. I uh, once had days hasn't taken enough shots. I once had a coach when I was in Great. like seventh grade and this coach told me, uh, I don't know if you are, but you look lazy on everything you do. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I was like, well, coach, well I I'm pretty lazy. I was like, coach. well, coach, <laughs> so I was like, coach, I am working. I am fucking tired as shit. I'm working my ass off right now. I don't know how to fix that. <laughs> um, and I, it turned out I was just, you know, horrifically out of shape, but. Oh, come on. That's on cam. <sighs> what the fucking fuck? All right, sixteen point lead. Come on, you need a you need a bucket here. Close it out. Just shoot. <laughs> there you go. Get there the, you go. That's that a good floater. Shot. There's that floater. That patented floater. All right, fourteen point game. Fourteen seconds left. If all and right, and Tom Crean came into this game with a good game plan. You know what it was? What? Pressure the fucking shit out of the ball. So we suck when we're when the ball is pressured. Yeah. Trenton Watford freaks out he when, does. when he gets pressured. Uh Javante is, you know, he's good when he gets pressured, but he's he could be better. Mm-hmm. Uh they, it's just we have no true point guard on this team. No. No one on this team is like a, a very, very good dribbler. Dude, this is I mean, we you know how much time ta- how much we've talked about roster management with LSU football. Yeah. And this is another thing like roster management with basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'll scream it till I'm fucking blue in the face. <laughs> Tremont waters should be, be on this team. He should have been on this team last year. He should have been on this team this year. He's a, he would be a senior on this fucking team. Yeah. Like dude, we would be a top 10 team. Yeah. That's not, that's not even crazy to say either. Until you're a first round pick, you have no business going out in the draft. Yeah. None. You're not going to be guaranteed shit. You can make a team if you want, but it's going to be hard. Jesus. Look at this shit. Christ. All right. I've had enough. That's pathetic, bro. 16 point game. Percentage we come back in the second half. I, this team is so helter skelter. Um, oh, I, I, I have a feeling we're going to come out pretty hot in the second half. I do too. I, I think. We're we're about to change everything up defensively, especially. Uh and I got a feeling that these shots are gonna start falling at some point. Uh Huey says I think that speaks to the culture of not making NCAA runs. And I think that was the um talking about 
guys going out in the draft. Um, yeah, I agree. I, you know, if it was um, Michigan State or a, you know, you say I hate to say Duke because Duke Duke's getting all these one and doneers now, but right. Michigan State always comes to mind of like guys who just have like guys who just stick around forever. Sure, Villanova. Villanova. I was just <laughs> like Villanova yeah. fucking always has guys that yeah. just stay there. Seniors. Like right. four fucking seniors on the starting starting lineup. Right. Like, dude, I, I don't know why we can't get to that level. Um, um I mean, I, I don't know if it's I, something I, something like you promised these guys that they're gonna be in and it, out. Dude, it's so much harder nowadays, I think. Um and you know, Michigan State is 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 definitely one of the best at that. Who's who's their t- head, head coach? Izzo. Izzo, yeah. I mean, Izzo's a you know, top five coach in the country. Um, he is, but they they recruit at a different a different kind of player. Um, they recruit these por- program players and they develop them over time. You think that's a difference though between um, like I don't know the next the last time uh, Michigan State ever had a one and dunner. I don't think they ever have, but they're always consistently really good. I know they've had players come out that were you know sick, uh, and I I would just assume that they were one and dunners. Um, but I can't think of any of them off, off the top of my head. Uh, Miles Bridges, I think. Miles one Bridges, of that's one guy. I think, I think that's it, right. I think that's one guy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's an that's example all of, like, of like Cassius Winston has been there. I th- I think he's, yeah. is he still there? I don't know if he's still there or not. <laughs> uh, yeah, he. I think he was a four year guy. I'm pretty sure. Um, I saw um, I saw a bracketology where we were uh, matched up. I think in a second round game against. Um, Ohio State. Oh yeah, or maybe it was a first round. Maybe it was a uh, no, no. Oh, I don't know if we were an eight seed or if we were a seven. But okay. uh, I haven't seen any Ohio, Ohio State. State's almost always. And I heard uh, they they were almost like a one seed. They're right? a one seed. Yeah. So almost everybody has them as a one seed. There's none of the none of the twos are really. I haven't seen them play one time this year. <laughs> yeah. No, I, this is good, like wha- how weird COVID is for yeah. me this year. Is that I haven't watched any <laughs> of basketball outside of the SEC. Well, I don't. I actually didn't get to watch the I've game. Seen a but they talk. played. They played Michigan the other day, okay. and Michigan won. Uh, I think by five. It was a really good game, apparently. Um, but that was uh, you know, Michigan's obviously also a one seed. They are? Uh, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah, Ohio State and Michigan. And so Ohio State loses this game, and they're still on the one line for, like, everybody. Okay. Um. So you have Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, and Ohio State. Right, yeah. So it's a it's a big drop-off after Baylor and Gonzaga to Michigan. It's not. A, well, it's actually not a huge drop-off because Michigan No, is but a, they're the number one in number Michigan's two. Michigan's a damn good team, and so is Ohio State, really. Um. But, yeah, that's a pretty significant drop-off right there. And then after Ohio State, Dude, it's a huge drop off. Like yeah. Villanova's probably the next team up, and Villanova's struggling right now. I mean, they just lost to Creighton. Uh, Creighton might be the might honestly be the best team in the Big East right now. Hmm. Um, at least right now. Uh, I'm sure Villanova's going to make a run at the end of the year. Um, then you got you know you got Alabama in there who you know they have five losses. Um, uh, they have several bad losses too. Huey says all eights must have us playing Ohio State in the second. Okay, um, one had us playing Gonzaga, Gonzaga in the second, so one of us had yeah. eight C in the Gonzaga. Right. So, so Lenardi has this as a seven. Um, I think who was that? I, I want to say Illinois. Illinois too. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I, I seen do. A, I seen Illinois play a little bit early in this year. Here's my problem. They got that guy. Ah, shit, I forget his name. It's uh, uh guard right it's a weird name no it's uh he's a big guy okay and that's that's why i'm worried really big uh he's a pretty big dude yeah i think he's like a power forward and he uh he's mainly a post guy mm-hmm. and that if we have to play any of those type of guys like a just someone who can just bang in the post i don't see how we defend that and i know illinois i've seen them play a little bit they can shoot the ball pretty well so is that right yeah that's another okay, I didn't fear know that, that I, I know have. The, I know their best player is a um, you know a lottery pick type of guy, and okay. he's, he's a big fella. That reminds me of that Maryland second rounder that we had a few years. Yeah, ago. it's kind of like that. Uh, what was his name? Fernando. Yeah. So um, Bruno. Bruno. Yeah, that's all right. Something. That's right. Whatever. Um, yeah, no, we couldn't really stop that guy either very much. But I mean, we had Cavell back then, so yeah. I wasn't too worried about it. You had two guys. You had Cavell and you had Nas. And you had Nas, right? And like you know, Nas now was now your big defender, guy is six ten. Josh Law. That <laughs> I mean, that's where I've been Dude, talking that's... about having a big. Hopefully, you need a point guard. And you need a big. Hopefully, we get a Sharif big that can back. run. 
I mean, I, yeah, I know Sharif, Sharif isn't. Uh, he's not like he's not a huge, body, right? But, but he's uh, he's long. Yeah, he's he's our most true pl- post player other than Josh Gray, um, who I still. I I'm mean, on the Josh Gray train. <laughs> Josh Gray. Man, I need Josh Gray to play I'll tell more. You, so, well, I, I knew he was uncoordinated. I mean, we've watched him on TV enough times to know that. But yeah. seeing him from those seats in person at the Auburn game the other day, man, he is very uncoordinated. He said it's, he watched a, he watched the Maryland game at a uh, Buffalo Wild Wings in Maryland. It was a fun game. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we we won that. What it was? It was a buzz beater. Trey, yeah. Trey, Trey, Trey Waters. Trey might won it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, we are going to wrap it up, guys. Uh, okay. It's halftime. What are we down? 16? 16. Great. 45 uh, Be fantastic. If we were uh, probably winning, we would just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> but we're down by 16. Yeah. Uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, appreciate everybody that was uh, in on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. We appreciate you guys. Check us out. Uh, pr- please like and subscribe to our YouTube page. Yes. and. Uh, if you can really do like it uh, if you can because that really does help us but also check us out tomorrow we will have the durante jones bourbon club it's our first official meeting of the durante jones bourbon club and the hopes for the durante jones bourbon club is that durante jones himself actually joins so uh we haven't had that happen yet but we're trying to make that happen quickly Get durante but- jones over to bogey's yeah, well, so in bogeys, we appreciate them. Uh, they're going to be partnering with us. We'll have probably this week we'll be here. We're going to have the Durante Jones in a backyard. And then hopefully the next week we'll have it at bogeys. So, That'd be awesome. Um, and anybody that's in town, they're more than welcome to come and be in the gallery for the, the Bourbon Club. Uh, we appreciate you guys again. Appreciate all of our sponsors, courtesy Buick GMC and Lafayette. Check out Brandon Lejean and also Bear Process Safety and ether insurance and of course our newest sponsor bogeys uh big shout out also to papa earl's cajun seasoning We've been talking to pop right. um uh, trying to get something going with pop over there in the u club see if we can get something going so um we appreciate everybody again appreciate y'all and it's one team one podcast logging out <laughs>